Hi everyone, and uh, welcome back to this online short course on incentives in computer science. Uh, this is going to be module number three. We're going to be talking about asymmetric information, specifically about adverse selection, uh, moral hazard, and the implications of those topics to the design of reputation systems. Let's begin with adverse selection, which shows how a form of market failure that can occur when one side of the market, meaning either the buyers or the sellers, when one side of the market has strictly more information about the quality or the value of the goods in the market uh, than the other side. So what I want to do is start with the academically most famous example, and then we'll take our lessons learned and apply them back to uh, online marketplaces. So the classic example of adverse selection is what's known as the market for lemons, something which was uh, written about by George Akerlof back in 1970. Uh, and this is one of the reasons that Akerlof won the uh, Nobel Prize in Economics in 2001. And just to be clear, lemon in the market for lemons, it's not referring to the citrus fruit. Uh, that's a word for an old car which no longer works. So we're going to think about a market for used cars. And there's going to be a bunch of cars on the market, each one with a single seller. Uh, and each car is going to be either good or bad. And moreover, as a seller, you know whether you have a good car or whether you have a bad car. Let's say that each seller who has a car that they know is a bad car, they're going to have a value of four for it. So they'd be willing to sell it for a price of four or higher. Uh, whereas meanwhile, the sellers who have good cars, they would want a higher price. They would accept any, uh, any offer at 10 or above. So four for the bad cars, 10 for the good cars. That's what's up, that's what's up with the sellers. Now let's assume we also have some very uh, some buyers who are really looking to do business. So a buyer who get, would be willing to buy a uh, bad car for up to six, which again is uh, plenty for what the sellers would be willing to accept. And similarly, buyers would be willing to buy a good car uh, for 12. Let's also, for concreteness, assume that uh, there's more demand than supply. So there's more buyers than there are sellers. Though this is really just for concreteness. This is not an important assumption. Now, if this is the setup, what do we want to see happen? Uh, well, we want to see all of the cars get sold, right? I mean, we have a good match between uh, buyers who are willing to pay more than what sellers would be happy to accept. So we'd like to see all the good cars sold for a fair price, meaning a price somewhere between 10 and 12, and also all the bad cars sold, again, for a fair price, meaning a price somewhere between four and six. That is the That, that would be a successful market outcome uh, in this scenario. Now, the easy situation is if there's, a symmet if there's symmetric information, meaning the buyers know just as much as the sellers. In other words, a buyer can tell by looking at a car whether it's going to be a good car or a bad car. And then actually just, you know, if people just do kind of decentralized negotiation, you would expect an outcome more or less like what we wanted. You'd expect all the good cars to go for a price between 10 and 12. Under our assumption that there's more buyers than sellers, that there's competition, uh, you would expect the price to be pushed up to the maximum that uh, buyers would be willing to pay or almost. So you'd expect the good cars to all be sold for a price around 12 and the bad cars to all be sold for a price around six. That's what would happen if the buyers were fully cognizant of which were the good cars and which were the bad cars. To make things more interesting and arguably more realistic, let's introduce asymmetric information and assume that the buyers know less than the sellers about car quality. And actually, just to make the point as simple as possible, let's look at the extreme case where literally every single car in this lot is indistinguishable to the buyers. They have no idea whether a given car is good or bad. The sellers, as before, they're going to know whether their car is good or bad. Now, if you think about it, if, if all the cars are indistinguishable, you would expect them all to be selling you know, for roughly the same price. So to analyze what's going to happen, meaning which cars, if any, are going to get sold in this scenario and at what prices, uh, let's introduce a couple parameters, a little notation. Uh, so first of all, by G, that's going to denote of all the cars that could possibly be put on the market, G is going to be the fraction of them that are good. And we're going to assume that everybody knows this. So everybody knows that 60% of the cars out there are good and 40% of them are bad. And then our second parameter, H, that's going to be the fraction of the cars which are actually put on the market. The fraction of the cars actually on the market which are good. Now, if everybody who has a car 
puts it on the market, then of course H equals G, just by definition. But we're going to allow sellers to withhold their car from the market if the going price is less than they would be willing to accept. So we allow sellers to withhold their cars from the market, and for that reason H might be different than G. So for example, if all of the um, owners of bad cars put their cars on the market, but not all of the owners of good cars put their cars on the market, then H, the fraction of car good cars on the market, is going to be less than G, the fraction of good cars in the overall population. The question I now want to ask is, what value of H do we expect uh, at equilibrium? So in other words, you know, if we let things play out in the cars that are actually on the market, what fraction of them do we think are going to be good? I'm not going to give you a, a formal mathematical definition of what I mean by at equilibrium. I mean, there is a formal mathematical definition. I'm just going to skip it and appeal to your intuition. You know, basically it means, you know, that at the going prices, no one, no one in the market is incentivized to exit and no one out of the market is incentivized to enter. So it's kind of a stable point where at the going prices, uh, everybody's doing what they want to be doing as far as trading or not. The first thing I want to observe is that no matter what G is, no matter sort of what fraction of good cars are out there, uh, there will always be an equilibrium uh, in which H unfortunately is equal to zero, uh, in which only the um, owners of the bad cars bring them to market and none of the owners of the good cars come to market. So why is this going to be an equilibrium? Well, uh, if, all of the if all of the buyers believe that all of the cars in the market are bad, if all of the buyers believe that H equals zero, they think they're getting a bad car, so they're only going to be willing to pay up to six for one. Uh, now, the sellers of bad cars are happy to sell their cars for a price of six, but if you're an owner of a good car, you're not going to give it away for just six. You want ten or more. So at a going price of six, all of the owners of the good cars are going to stay out of the market. Meanwhile, all of the owners of the bad cars will successfully sell their cars at a price of six to buyers who are quite sure that they're getting a bad car. So that's always a possibility. If you get yourself into this unfortunate situation where there aren't any good cars in the market, um, then the price just isn't going to be high enough for them to be any incentive for those owners of good cars to enter. So you kind of get stuck there with only bad cars and a price of six. You might hope, though, that there's kind of the other extreme equilibrium where everybody participates, and hopefully that would be self-reinforcing as well. So that would correspond to the question, you know, is H equal to G? Perhaps that's also an equilibrium. So is this case where H equals G, where all of the cars are on the market, is that also self-reinforcing in the same way that the H equals zero solution is? Well, that's going to depend on the value of G, right? So let's, you know, let's try it. Let's suppose H was equal to G. So suppose all the buyers thought that all the cars were on the market. So a G fraction of the cars in the market were going to be good. Now, as a buyer, I cannot tell one car from another. So when I buy a car, you know, for my purposes, it looks just like a random outcome. It looks like that with a G probability, the fraction of good cars, with G probability, I'm going to get a good car. And with the remaining probability, 1 minus G, I'm going to get a bad car. Right? I have value uh, 12 for good cars and 6 for bad cars. So I'm going to have an expected value, just, just the weighted average. So 12 times G plus 6 times 1 minus G. So is this going to be self-reinforcing? So if the going price is what the buyers would be willing to pay, namely 6 plus 6G, uh, is it the case that all of the sellers would continue to participate? And that's going to depend on G, right? So, I mean, the, the sellers of the bad cars, they're happy no matter what, right? They'd be willing to sell for 4, and they're definitely going to be getting a price much bigger than 4. So forget about the sellers of the bad cars. They're super happy. It's the sellers of the good cars that we're worried about, because they're happy only if they're getting a price of 10. And so looking at this, so buyers are willing to pay 10 if and only if G, the fraction of good cars, is at least two thirds, right? That's the sort of uh, tipping point where the six plus six G is, is bigger versus less than 10. So if G is two thirds or more, then indeed, this is a self reinforcing equilibrium in the same way that the H equals zero uh, situation was self reinforcing. The price is going to be high enough that all of the uh, sellers of good cars are going to be willing to stay in the market because the going price is high enough. Conversely, however, if G is less than two thirds, if less than two thirds of the cars out there in the world are good cars, well, then buyers are going to be willing to pay a price that's only less than 10, which means this will not be self-reinforcing. 
if the going price is less than 10, then the good sellers are just going to exit the market and you'll be left back in the H equals zero case. You'll be left in a, in a market where you only have bad cars. So a few comments. So first of all, let's consider the happy case where G, the fraction of good cars, is indeed at least two thirds. And therefore, as we see, the case of H equals G is also an equilibrium, where the going price is going to be 6 plus 6G, which is something that's 10 or higher. So all of the trades make both sides happy, no seller wants to drop out, etc. And the interesting point here is that for G at least two-thirds, there are two very different equilibria, each of which is self-reinforcing. If all the buyers believe that there are only bad cars on the market, and hence only make low offers, then indeed, no seller of a good car will participate. But if all buyers believe that all good cars are on the market and hence are willing to make higher offers, then sure enough, it will be the case that all of the good cars will be on the market. In either case, buyers' beliefs are a self-fulfilling prophecy. So, you know, in the news, when you hear the terms of consumer confidence, this is the kind of phenomenon that they're usually getting at. Now let's move to the, to the less happy case where G, the fraction of good cars, is less than two thirds. And so the going price is too low to keep the owners of the good cars in the market and they will exit, bringing us back to H equals zero. So H equals zero is going to be the only equilibrium in this case, in the case where G is less than two thirds. And this constitutes a market failure in the sense that the outcome of the market is not Pareto optimal. That is, you could do something different that would make everybody happier. Namely, the good cars, which went unsold, if you transferred those over to the um, over to buyers and transferred, say, 11 uh, units of money from the buyers over to the sellers, both those buyers and those sellers would be better off than they would have been uh, under the outcome of this market. So that's the sense in which um, it's not, quote unquote, Pareto optimal. You can make um, people better off without making anybody worse off. And it's a type of uh, market failure. There's a name for this type of market failure. It's called asymmetric information. So now let's move on to the next slide where we talk about several more examples of how adverse selection comes up in the real world. 